Hare Krishna, everyone. So yesterday we started with Srimad Bhagavatam. So yesterday we just read about uh, the forward preface and the introduction just we started with. So today we'll be continuing with the page number, canto number one, page number three, that is a short sketch of the life and teachings of Lord Chaitanya, the preacher of Srimad Bhagavatam. So meanwhile, if you do not have any uh, the hard copy of this book, you can also go through the online version of it, the Veda base. I will just share my screen so that you can relate to it. Yeah. So we can see a short sketch of the life and teachings of Lord Chaitanya, the preacher of Srimad Bhagavatam. So we will start reading today from here. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the great apostle of love of God and the father of the congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord, advented himself at Sridhar Mayapur, a quarter in the city of Navadif in Bengal, on the Falguni Purima evening in the year 1407 Sakabda, corresponding to February 1486 by the Christian calendar. So Navdiv is a very nice place. I have I was very much fortunate when I was uh, there in Kolkata in 2013-14. I had the opportunity to visit it three times. Yeah. So that is the place where exactly Lord Chaitanya appeared. So we'll go to the next paragraph. His father, Sri Jagannath Mishra, a learned Brahmana from the district of Silhet came to Navadip as a student because at that time Navadip was considered to be the center of education and culture. He domiciled on the banks of Ganges after marrying Srimati Sachidevi, a daughter of Srila Nilambar Chakravarti, the great learned scholar of Navadip. So a little bit of family background of Lord Chaitanya has been given here. Jagannath Misra had a number of daughters by his wife, Srimati Sachidevi, and most of them expired at an early age. Two surviving sons, Sri Vishwarupa and Vishwambhar, became at last the object of their parental affection. The tenth and youngest son, who was named Vishwambhar, later became known as Nimai Pandit. And then after accepting the renounced order of life, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited his transcendental activities for 48 years and then disappeared from this moral world in the year 1455 Sakavda at Puri. For his 24 years, he remained at Navadip as a student and householder. His first wife was Srimadhi Lakshmi Priya, who died at an early age when the Lord was away from home. When he returned from West East Bengal, he was requested by his mother to accept a second wife, and he agreed. His second wife was Srimadhi Vishnu Priya Devi, who bore the separation of the Lord throughout her life because the Lord took the order of the order of sannyas at the age of 24. When Srimati Vishnu Priya was barely 16 years old. After taking sannyasa, the Lord made his headquarters at Jagannath Puri due to the request of his mother, Srimati Sachi Devi. The Lord remained for 24 years at Puri. For six years of this time, he traveled continuously all over India and especially throughout southern India preaching the Srimad Bhagavatam. Lord Chaitanya not only preached the Srimad Bhagavatam, but propagated the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita as well in the most practical way. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Sri Krishna is depicted as the absolute personality of Godhead. And his last teachings in that great book of transcendental knowledge instruct that one should give up all the modes of religious activities and accept him, Lord Sri Krishna, as the only worshipable Lord. The Lord then assured that all his devotees would be protected from all sorts of sinful acts and that for them there would be no cause for anxiety. 
unfortunately despite lord sri krishna's direct order and teachings of the bhagavad gita the less intelligent people misunderstand him to be nothing but a great historical personality and thus they cannot accept him as the original personality of god such men with a poor fund of knowledge are misled by many non devotees thus the teachings of the bhagavad gita were misinterpreted even by great scholars after the disappearance of lord sri krishna there were hundreds of commentaries on the bhagavad gita by many erudite scholars and almost every one of them was motivated by self interest lord sri chaitanya mahaprabhu is the self same lord sri krishna this time however he appeared as a great devotee of the lord in order to preach to the people in general as well as to religionists and philosophers about the transcendental position of sri krishna the primeval lord and the cause of all causes the essence of his preaching is that lord sri krishna who appeared at braj bhumi vrindavan as the son of the king of braj nanda maharaj is the supreme personality of godhead and is therefore worshipable by all vrindavan dham is not different from the lord because the name fame form and place where the lord manifests himself are all identical with the lord as absolute knowledge therefore vrindavan dham is as worshipable as the lord the highest form of transcendental worship of the lord was exhibited by the dancers of rajbhumi in the form of a pure affection for the lord and lord sri chaitanya mahaprabhu recommends this process as the most excellent mode of worship he accepts the shrimad bhagavata purana as a spotless literature for understanding the lord and he preaches that the ultimate goal of life for all human beings is to attain the stage of prema or love of god many devotees of lord chaitanya like sri la vrindavan das thakur sri lochan das thakur sri la krishna das kavirat goswami sri kavi karnapura sri Prabodhanand Saraswati, Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, Sri Gopala Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, and in this latter age, within 200 years, Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti, Sri Baladev Vidya Bhushan, Sri Shyamanand Goswami, Sri Narottam Das Thakur, Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and at last, Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, our spiritual master, and many other great and renowned scholars and devotees of the Lord have prepared. voluminous books and literatures on the life and percep- precepts of the lord such literatures are all based on the shastras like the vedas puranas upanishads ramayana mahabharat and other histories and authentic literatures approved by the recognized acharyas they are unique in composition and unrivaled in presentation and they are full of transcendental knowledge unfortunately the people of the world are still ignorant of them but when the literatures which are mostly in sanskrit and bengali come to light to the world and when they are presented before thinking people then india's glory and the message of love will overflow this morbid war which is vainly searching after peace and prosperity by various illusory methods not approved by the acharyas in the chain of disciplic succession the readers of this small description of the life and precepts of lord chaitanya will profit much to go through the books of sri la vrindavan das thakur sri chaitanya bhagavat and sri la krishna das kaviraj goswami sri chaitanya charitamrit the early life of the lord is most fascinating expressed by the author of chaitanya bhagavat and as far as the teachings are concerned they are more vividly explained in the chaitanya charitramrit now they are available to the english speaking public in our teachings of lord chaitanya the lord's early life was recorded by one of his chief devotees and contemporaries namely sri la murari gupta a medical practitioner of that time in the latter part of the life history Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was recorded by his private secretary Sri 
Damodar Goswami or Srila Swarup Damodar, who was practically constant companion of the Lord at Puri. These two devotees recorded practically all the incidents of the Lord's activities and later on all the books dealing with the Lord, which are ever mentioned, were composed on the basis of Kadachas notebooks by Srila Damodar Goswami and Murari Gupta. So the Lord advented himself on the Falguni Purnima evening of 1407 Sakabda. And it was by the will of the Lord that there was a lunar eclipse on that evening. During the hours of the eclipse, it was the custom of the Hindu public to take bath in the Ganges or any other sacred river and chant the Vedic mantras for purification. When Lord Chaitanya was born during the lunar eclipse, all India was roaring with the holy sound of Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. These 16 names of the Lord are mentioned in many Puranas and Upanishads. And they are described as the Taraka Brahmanama of this age. It is recommended in the Sastras that offenseless chanting of these holy names of the Lord can deliver a fallen soul from material bondage. There are innumerable names of the Lord both in India and outside, and all of them are equally good because all of them indicate the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But because these 16 are especially recommended for this age. People should take advantage of them and follow the path of the great Acharyas who attain success by practicing the rules of the Sastras, revealed scriptures. The simultaneous occurrence of the Lord's appearance and the lunar eclipse indicated the distinctive mission of the Lord. The mission was to preach the importance of chanting the holy names of the Lord in this age of Kali quarrel. In this present age, quarrels take place even over trifles, and therefore the Sastras have recommended for this age a common platform for realization, namely chanting the holy names of the Lord. People can hold meetings to glorify the Lord in their respective languages and with melodious songs, and if such performances are executed in an offenseless manner. It is certain that the participants will be will gradually attain spiritual perfection without having to undergo more rigorous methods. At such meetings, everyone, the learned and the foolish, the rich and the poor, the Hindus and the Muslims, the Englishmen and the Indians, and the Chandalas and the Brahmanas can all hear the transcendental sounds and thus clinch the dust of material association from the mirror of the heart. To confirm the Lord's mission, all the people of the world will accept the holy name of the Lord as a common platform for the universal religion of mankind. In other words, the advent of the holy name took place along with the advent of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Lord was on the lap of his mother, he would at once stop crying as soon as the ladies surrounding him chanted the holy names and clapped their hands. This peculiar incident was observed by the neighbors with awe and veneration. Sometimes the young girls took pleasure in making the Lord cry and then stopping him by chanting the holy name. So from his very childhood, Lord began to preach the importance of the holy name. In his early age, Lord Sri Chaitanya was known as Nimai. This name was given by his beloved mother because the Lord took his bath beneath a nimba tree in the courtyard of his paternal house. When Lord was offered solid food at the age of six months in the Anna ceremony, Anna Prashana ceremony, the Lord indicated his future activities. At this, at this time, it was customary to offer the child both the coins and books in order to get some indication of the future tendencies of the child. The Lord was offered on one side coins and on, other, on the other side the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Lord accepted the Bhagavatam instead of the coins. When he was a mere baby crawling in the yard, one day a snake appeared before him and the Lord began to play with it. 
all the members of the house were struck with fear and awe. But after a little while, the snake went away and the baby was taken away by his mother. Once he was stolen by a thief who intended to steal his ornaments, but the Lord took a pleasantry from the shoulder of the bewildered thief who was searching for a solitary place in order to rob the baby. It so happened that the thief, wandering hither and thither, finally arrived just before the house of Jagannath Mishra and being afraid of being caught, dropped the baby at once. Of course, the anxious parents and relatives were glad to see the lost child. Once a pilgrim Brahmana was received at the house of Jagannath Mishra and when he was offering food to the Godhead, the Lord appeared before him and partook of the prepared food. The eatables had to be rejected because the child touched them and so the Brahmana had to make another preparation. The next time the same thing happened and when this happened repeatedly for the third time, the baby was finally put to bed. At about 12 at night, when all the members of the house were fast asleep within their closed rooms, the pilgrim Brahmana offered his specially prepared food to the deity. And in the same way, the baby Lord appeared before the pilgrim and spoiled his offerings. The Brahmana then began to cry, but since everyone was fast asleep, no one could hear him. At that time, the baby Lord appeared before the fortunate Brahmana and disclosed his identity as Krishna himself. The Brahmana was forbidden to disclose this incident and the baby returned to the lap of his mother. There are many similar incidents in his childhood. As a naughty boy, he sometimes used to tease the orthodox Brahmanas who used to bath in the Ganges. When the Brahmanas complained to his father that he was placing them with water instead of attending schools, the Lord suddenly appeared before his father as though just coming from school with all his school clothes and books. At the Vathing Ghata, he also used to play jokes on the neighboring girls who engaged in worshipping Siva in hopes of getting good husbands. This is a common practice amongst unmarried girls in Hindu families. While they were engaged in such worship, the Lord not only appeared before them and said, My dear sisters, please give me all the offerings you just brought for Lord Siva. Lord Siva is my devotee and Parvati is my maid servant. If you worship me, then Lord Siva and all other demigods will be satisfied. Some of them refused to obey the naughty Lord and he would curse them that due to their refusal, they would be married to old men who had seven children by their previous wives. Out of fear and sometimes out of love, the girls would also offer him various goods and then the Lord would bless them and assure them that they would have very good young husbands and that they would be mothers of dozens of children. The blessings would enliven the girls, but they used often to complain of these incidents to their mother. In this way, the Lord passed his early childhood. Then when he was 16 years old, he started his own Chatuspati Vile school conducted by a learned Brahmana. In this school, he would simply explain Krishna, even in reading of Rings of Rama. Srila Jiva Goswami, in order to please the Lord, later composed a grammar in Sanskrit in which all the rules of grammar were explained the examples that used the holy names of the Lord. The grammar is still current. It is known as Hari Namamrit Vyakarar and is prescribed in the syllabus of schools in Bengal. During this time, a great Kashmir scholar named Kesav Kasmiri came to Navadvip to hold discussion on the Savastras. The Kashmir Pandita was a champion scholar and he had traveled to all places of learning in India. Finally, he came to Navadvip to contest the learned Panditas there. The Panditas of Navadvip decided to march Nimai Pandit, Lord Chaitanya with the Kashmir Pandit, thinking that if Nimai Pandit were defeated, they would have another chance to debate with the scholar. For Nimai Pandit was only a boy. And if the Kashmir Pandit were defeated, then they would even be more glorified because people would proclaim that a mere boy of Navadvip had defeated a champion scholar who was famous throughout India. 
It is so happened that Timai Pandit made Kashmiri Kesam Kashmiri while strolling on the banks of the Ganges. Ganges. The Lord requested him to compose a Sanskrit verse in the praise of the Ganges, and the Pandit, within a short time, composed a hundred slokas, reciting the verses like a storm and showing the strength of his verse learning. Nimai Pandit at once memorized all the slokas without an error. He quoted the 64th sloka and pointed out 13 rhetorical and literary irregularities. He particularly questioned the Pandita's use of the word Bhavani Vartu. Bhavani Vartu. He pointed out that use of the word was redundant. Bhavani means the wife of Siva, and who else can her be Vartha or husband? He also pointed out several other discrepancies, and the Kasvir Pandita was struck with wonder. He was astonished that a mere student of grammar could point out the literary mistakes of an erudite scholar. Although this matter was ended prior to any public meeting, the news spread like wildfire all over Navadip. But finally, case of Kashmir was ordered in a dream by Saraswati, the goddess of learning, to submit to the Lord. And thus, the Kashmir Pandit became a follower of the Lord. The Lord was then married with great pomp and gaiety, and at this time he began to preach the congregational chanting of the holy name of the Lord at Navadip. Some of the Brahmanas became envious of his popularity and they put many hindrances on his path. They are so jealous that they finally took the matter before the Muslim magistrate at the Navadip. Bengal was then governed by the Pathans and the governor of the province was Nawab Hussain Sa. The Muslim magistrate of Navadip took off the complaints of the Brahmanas <coughs> seriously and at first he warned the followers of Timai Pandit not to chant loudly the name of Hari. But Lord Chaitanya asked his followers to disobey the orders of the Kaji and they went on with their Sankirtan chanting party as usual. The magistrate then sent constables who interrupted a Sankirtan and broke some of the Mridangas drums. When Nimai Pandit heard of this incident, he organized a party of civil disobedience. He is a pioneer of the civil disobedience movement in India for the right cause. He organized a procession of 100,000 men with thousands of Mridangas and Kartals, hand symbols. And this procession passed over the roads of Navadip in the defense of the Kaji who had issued the order. Finally, the procession reached the house of the Kaji who went upstairs out of fear of the masses. The great crowds assembled at the Kaji's house displayed a violent temper. But the Lord asked them to be peaceful. At this time, the Kaji came down and tried to pacify the Lord by addressing him as nephew. He pointed out that he referred to Nilamba Chakravarti as uncle, and thus Srimadhi Chasidevi, Nimai Pandit's mother, was his cousin sister. He asked the Lord whether his sister's son could be angry at his maternal uncle, maternal uncle. And the Lord replied that since Kaji, the Kaji was his maternal uncle, he should receive his nephew well at his home. In this way, the issue was mitigated, and the two land scholars began long discussion of on the Quran and Hindu sastras. The Lord raised the question of cow killing, and the Kaji properly answered him by referring to the Quran. In turn, the Kaji also questioned the Lord about cow sacrifice in the Vedas, and the Lord replied that such sacrifices mentioned in the Vedas is not actually cow killing, and that sacrifice an old bull or a cow was sacrificed for the sake of receiving a fresh angle life by the power of Vedic mantras. But in the Kali Yuga, such cow sacrifices are forbidden because there are no qualified Brahmanas capable of conducting such a sacrifice. In fact, in Kali Yuga, all Yajnana sacrifices are forbidden because they are useless attempts by foolish men. In Kali Yuga, only the Sankirtan Yajna is recommended for all practical purposes. Speaking in this way, the Lord finally convinced the Kaji who became the Lord's follower. The Kaji then spoke, declared that no one should hinder the Sankirtan movement which was started by the Lord. And the Kaji left this order in his will for the sake of progeny. The Kaji's tomb still exists in the area of uh, Navadvip and Hindu pilgrims go there to show their respects. The Kaji's descendants are residents and they never objected to Sankirtan. Even during the 
Hindu Muslim riot days. So we will stop here. So tomorrow onwards, we will start from reading this paragraph. This incident shows clearly from here. So if you see in the book itself, almost uh, we have we are continuing with the introduction part only. So you can say up to page number 10, we have uh, completed today. So we'll start with uh, the page number 10, second paragraph from tomorrow onwards. This incident shows clearly that. From here we'll start. Thank you for listening. Hare Krishna.